We all know that rushing can be inherently difficult in Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition. I'm going to be giving you five tips that will hopefully help you and also people who have never really rushed before to give you a good idea of how to get better at it and to crash on the ladder. Let's do this. So tip number one, building prioritization. Now this isn't you building buildings, it's the buildings you're gonna be attacking when you're rushing your enemy base. So first things to think about are what buildings are on the outskirts because they're gonna be harder to defend for your opponent. They're gonna to have to bring their troops out into the open to try and face you. And that's if they have any troops as well because they could be doing any sort of greedy sort of builds, boomy builds, who the hell knows. So what we wanna do is we wanna try and take down buildings that have relatively low HP and are on the outskirts. And these are normally houses or the market marketplace something like that that will get you quick xp as well so you can then keep getting those unit shipments out and applying pressure the next sort of stage is to then sort of focus on the military building so like your barracks your range anything anything that sort of will counter your current composition try to focus on a military building that is currently potentially or could counter your composition that you're using for your rush and then a final thing is if you're against an opponent that has the auto gathering buildings such as the shrines for the japanese the tall for the Swedes, try and uh, punish those because they're going to be all over the map. So they're going to be a lot easier to take down. They're going to be harder to defend for your opponent. And once again, it puts them, it sets them back on their economy and also it gives you that good XP when you siege the buildings. Next tip is going to be unit prioritization. So when you're rushing, what units do you prioritize? You know, well, it sort of depends on what your composition is. There's not really a proper answer for this. But what I would say is that if you have cavalry in your composition or if you're going to open up with early raiding of cav before you follow up with your main rush, then I would sort of expect you to be targeting villagers, especially ones on hunts where the herding of hunts has been unsuccessful for your opponent and they're further out also targeting the wood line as well is very good the gold mine is a little bit more difficult because most of the time the gold mines will spawn relatively close to the tc so i think it's best to focus on the huntables and also the wood lines the next prioritization of unit uh, away from the villagers is anything that is easily countable for you so if you've got cav once again and your opponent has for, for whatever reason has got skirms available just try and punish those and take those out while you can now rather than having to deal with them later on when they could be an issue for you when you are following up with your main rush. Also, when you are pushing in with your main force, what we want to do is make sure that we do not deal with any sort of militia. So town militia, any sort of CM card that's popped, the colonial militia. What we want to do is when that's popped and when we have an idea that our opponent's going to be doing that, we want to back our troops off. We do not want to commit to that. We want to wait until their health has fully degraded down to one HP or near enough. And then we want to push back in again so we can get the full value and we don't lose too many troops. Now, tip number three sort of relates to the unit prioritization a little bit, which is positioning. So this is super important. And the main tip that I can give you on positioning, guys, is do not go behind your enemy TC. Do not get too stuck in to the middle of the base around the TC, because a lot of the time, if they're expecting that you're going to be rushing, which, you know, sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. But if they are, they're probably going to be setting their buildings up in a position where they will be able to funnel your troops in and will be able to get you in a very, very awkward position, especially if they pop the CM card or if they pop down militia or sentries or anything from the TC, they will be able to get you in a really awkward position. So what you want to do, do not go behind the TC, try and keep sort of on the outskirts around the base contain your opponent that's the main game try and contain them stop them getting any more resources idling their villagers that's what it's all about try and take down those houses like i've mentioned try and take down a military building if you can don't just sort of go straight in to the TC. Don't just tunnel vision to the TC because if you're rushing early, you're not going to have the composition to be able to take down that TC entirely and you're just going to be wasting troops. That TC is going to be firing off. Yes, it's idling villagers, but you're going to be losing a lot of your mass and nine times out of 10, you're not going to take that TC down. So just try and just, you know, idle your opponent, take down some houses, be annoying, take down a military building, get them to invest more into wood, and stop them from getting into age three if that's what they want to do and just try and keep them in age two where the advantage is yours right guys this is a massive one and it is don't overcommit. simple as that now of course you're probably gonna be saying widgie 
tell me how I don't overcommit. And it's really difficult to do that. You know, the only way that you can really do it is to look at your replays from the games that you lost or where you lost a significant amount of troops and it wasn't worth it. You'll know when you've done something and you just thought, I've lost way too much there. I didn't get enough value. And one of the main things is when your opponent, especially if they're a European Civ, they will use the town militia card, which is where they'll get extra militiamen out and their HP will slowly just fall. It will slowly just drop off. And when they do that, you want to just back out. The minute you see the town militia, just back out for a bit. It's not worth it. You know, yes, you're going to give your opponents some time to try and reestablish their economy, but it's going to give you some time to remass your army even more and then push in again. And when you push in, those militiamen are barely going to have any HP left because it reduces over time. They may have even one HP left and it's just a one shot and they're completely out and, and there's no value. There's barely any value from them using it because remember, it's a use of a card for them if they use the town militia card. It's a whole use of a card and also it's a, it costs some coin as well. You know, so just bear that in mind. Just think about that a little bit. And um, that's all I can really say on the matter, really. You know, just don't go in blindsidedly attacking the TC either, especially if you know you don't have enough troops and you don't think it's possible, especially if there's still a lot of infrastructure in your enemy base. That's a bit risky as well. But that's all I can say on that, guys. I hope that sort of helps a little bit. But just sort of study your replays. That's what I really suggest because I'm still doing it. I'm still really bad at over committing. It happens to me a lot and I get really salty about it. But you just got to look at your replays, see what you did wrong and just improve. OK, and the final tip is not a major one, but it's adapting to your opponent's composition. Now, this sort of really relates a lot a little bit later on into the game. So if you're still rushing, you're still applying that pressure and your opponent's doing a great job at defending, you may want to start to try and adapt and change your composition because they're probably trying to counter yours. So don't just go blindly in and creating the same two types of units. So, for example, if you're Russia, don't just keep blindly making strelets. You know, after you've got your Cossacks out from from your deck, for example, like blindly making strelets. Try and make some musketeers as well if they do have cav, because they're probably going to have an answer to your strelets, which will be melee cavalry or heavy cav. So use, get some muskets in there and uh, try and mix it up a bit. So always be on your toes. Don't just keep blindly making the same troops and thinking that it's going to work. And also you've got to think about, I'm going to need a unit to siege buildings down, you know, so try and think about that and how that's gonna play into what you're doing because you've always gotta be on top of it. You always gotta be raiding their vills. You've always gotta be taking some buildings down and just keeping them within their base and containing them. So guys, that's it, five tips. I hope you, you know, sort of find that useful, helpful. I'm not too sure if you actually know some of these or you're applying some of these already, but I just thought I would get it out there because if you know me, I love to play age two and the majority of the time I'm rushing or I'm doing some sort of timing attack or something like that, or maybe booming as well. But primarily I love to stay in age two for quite long and then transition into age three. So I hope you guys found this really helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you did. And of course, if I missed anything crucial or key, make sure to let me down, let me know down below and if you enjoyed it make sure to drop a like i'll catch you in the next video on the next stream catch you guys later